All right, so imagine this, a two month long trip with your whole family to another country. Now, if you're like most people and you hear that, you're probably starting to feel a little bit stressed out. You're starting to feel a little bit worried, a little bit anxious. Is everyone gonna get along? Are we just gonna fight the whole time? Is it gonna be horrible? Am I gonna have to do everything? There's definitely a lot to think about and the idea of really any group trip, whether it's family or not for a lot of people, is just a very stress-filled situation. We've been traveling with our parents for the past two weeks. I mean, we're definitely learning some stuff about each other for sure. I woke up at 6.30, then got out of bed at 7.30. And I don't think they're even up yet. They're probably still waiting for their food. Like they order their breakfast and then they have a, like a guy on a bicycle bring it. Plus they film everything when they're walking. They're always And they walk talking slow, so. Filming. I totally get why something like this would be an absolute nightmare for a lot of people. Man, look at how organized you are. You are ready to go. I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> it's complicated. There's so many expectations. Who takes care of what? Who pays for what? All these little nuances of all these things that you're doing that I... Yeah, it's totally stressful. But also, it's totally worth it if you can figure out how to do it together as a group. Today we're at Sentosa Island and we know this might be a little bit of a touristy resort, but as we've learned, touristy does not equal bad. Sentosa is an island only 15-20 minutes away from the mainland of Singapore, and it is beautiful and magical, and this is a place that none of us have ever been to before, so that's a plus. There are several different ways to get here. You can take a cable car from Singapore, which is a little bit more expensive, about $30 per person. You can take a free shuttle from Vivo City. We took one of the buses from the hotel we are staying at, which only took about half an hour. We're on a double-decker bus, and uh, we have it mostly all to ourselves. And we got front row seats. It was a double-decker bus, and it was only $2 per person. <laughs> they don't have S&B, but they do have S&B. Okay, that could be just so as it's good. like a seasoning? Is it, how spicy is it's it? Not, it's not so spicy. I mean, don't go crazy with it. Yay. Thank you. Mm. You like it? A very good mushroom. I would eat an entire soup of just that mushroom. So we just got to Singapore a few days ago, and truthfully, over the past couple of months, we've been spending a lot of time just sitting inside. If you guys watched our video a couple weeks ago, you saw that we were burned out. And then our parents came in and the whole thing, the whole feeling turned around. And it was just such a nice change. They came in with all this excitement, this energy of like, we gotta do everything, we gotta go see everything. And it, it took us a while to adapt to that. In fact, I think we still are. Well, with the help of our parents and all the energy and enthusiasm they were bringing to the trip, it finally felt like we could get moving a little bit, like we could start getting out of the funk that we were in. So once you actually make it to Sentosa, there are a lot of different ways that you can get around. We just got off of the Sentosa Express and it's completely free and it takes you to a few different stops. Once you actually get to the beach station, you can walk to any of the beaches or you can take another shuttle, the beach shuttle, for free around to the different beaches. At this beach, there's a suspension bridge that you can take to another island. The major thing that they helped out with when they got on the trip was taking over some of the responsibilities. And I think that that's one of the crucial things that most people forget when they're doing a group trip or a trip with their family is that there has to be shared responsibility. There can't just be one person taking care of everything. If you're that, you're not really on the trip. So the way it works now is basically I handle a lot of the logistical boring stuff. I'm the one who has to Google all the COVID restrictions and figure out which flight we're gonna take. And then Lisa will be the one who figures out the why of what we're doing, as in looking into the history of everything, teaching us all about what's going on and showing us all these amazing places that are quite a bit off the tourist path that are usually awesome.
through this bridge. But now that our parents are here, they're taking over, figuring out which hotel we should stay at and what we should do every day and bringing the energy and the excitement to actually get us to go and do those things. It's been, it's been such a big help and such a big deal. And listen, it's not like it's been all sunshine and rainbows the whole time, you know? We've had our arguments, we've had our disagreements, we've had our difficulties, for sure. And I think that's totally normal for any group vacation that you take with anybody, but I think it's especially poignant with the parents. You know, for the longest time, it was their job to take care of me, to raise me, and I've always been the kid, and now I'm an adult. The kid wants to grow up, and the kid wants to go and do everything, and they want to do it on their own, and then the parent wants to take care of them and still, and still make sure that they're safe. You can't ask a parent to stop being a parent, no matter what, forever, that's what they're gonna be. We've been traveling for 250 or so days straight. For them, they haven't been on a vacation in a little over two years. So just the whole point of the trip, the whole feeling of it is totally different between the two of us and it's about finding that common ground where everybody gets to get out of the trip what they want to. shipping ships <laughs> right there and the mountains they're beautiful for us I think it just took remembering that it takes actual work to make a trip like this work you got four different people at four different budget levels who all want to do four different things but you're trying to have this experience together and the way you do that is compromise it's the only way to do it. So yeah, a lot of thoughts on this, obviously. Uh, but first, I gotta go swimming right there. Now we know resorts aren't necessarily for everybody. They aren't even for us sometimes, but this place is so beautiful and it's so accessible with all the trams and buses for free. I even saw someone take a stroller on here. They even have a sunscreen dispenser. This is amazing. Okay, going in the water. Wow, it feels so nice. So now we're awaiting the beach shuttle to take us to the other part of the island. There's a trail out there where you can see some historical sites. And no, it's not raining. I'm just sweating. There's a fan shuttle stop. We have just started the nature discovery and buy a trail and it is very loud. I hope to learn what birds or insects make this sound. <laughs> We just learned from the friendly guys at the Nature Discovery Center that we are here at the height of the cicada mating season. They're very busy, these ones. This is a beautiful canopy walk. So much greenery. It feels like you're in a completely different part. It's like what I imagine what Singapore was like from the very beginning. hard to believe that we're only 15, 20 minutes away from Singapore. Can you hear me out there? We're at Fort Soloso and taking in this beautiful skywalk and also the historical sites. It's amazing to see how much Singapore has changed since that time. It's wild to me that this all used to be jungle and now it's this beautiful metropolitan city within a garden. That was free? Yeah, 
it says, well, it says first two hours for use once daily. You know, you need your phone in Singapore, otherwise you can't get in and out anywhere. <laughs> and I was down to 8%. The best part about eating in Asia is all the hawker centers and food courts and yeah, everyone gets to everyone gets to get what they want. Okay. Options. So far it's amazing. Tell me what you got. Mm. Alright, so for eight dollars, I got three pieces of roti prata. Fried, tasty, fluffy, buttery almost, but fatty yeah. bread. And then a whole thing of chicken biryani. Wait, for all of this? All of this was eight bucks. Oh eight dollars Singapore, which is like five fifty wow. US or something. Wow. So we're gonna knock out for a little bit and then we're heading right back out to the gardens by the bay. This is my second time back at the Gardens by the Bay, and honestly, it feels like the first time. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> it's so cool! I hope we never lose this sense of wonder and amazement because Singapore is seriously magical, majestic, beautiful fragrant. There's plumerias on the ground everywhere. It makes me really appreciate and understand why Josh likes to keep coming back to a lot of places for that nostalgia, but also to show people the magic that he experienced when he first got to a place. It's a cycle and a gift that keeps on giving for sure. I gotta show you something. <laughs> Come here. Come here. What's going on down there? Touch a leaf. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you seen anything like that? Never. These are the sensitive plants. <laughs> That's what they're called. And then they just pop right back up. Yeah. You can see that one coming back. Wow. Cool, right? So amazing. I just looked it up. The official name is called Mimosa Pudica, which translates in Latin to shy. It's also known as the shy plant, the sleepy plant, the touch-me-not, and the humble plant. They apparently evolved to do that to protect themselves against predators and maybe to even reduce water loss. They're cool, but you shouldn't touch them too much or else they lose their sensitivity and nobody wants that. Sometimes you come here for content on travel. Sometimes you come here for content on botany. If you enjoy that, please subscribe. Every time they're so beautiful, they're still so, so magical. So what are your first impressions of Singapore Garden by the Bay? I think it's as if somebody took a beautiful botanical garden and put it in the middle of Disney World. It's, it's like, it's so magical. It's a botanical garden and then it's like three levels above that because there's so much else going on. And it's free. And it's public. Yeah. There's people like... You just walk in. Yeah, there's just families here biking and playing sports on the grass. So I would say now we're coming back around to the feeling that we had at first when the trip started, which is that everything's really exciting. And I feel a lot of it has to do with, you know, obviously them being here and bringing that energy to us. But we had to drop our expectations of what this trip was going to be because our expectations were so different than the reality that we were experiencing every single day. And they always are. already. I could only imagine what's some light stuff. Still gets me every single time. But we wanted to make sure that everyone 
on this trip, my parents who were gonna be with us for like two months, that they felt some ownership, some agency in this whole trip. And we had to trust that they would do this trip, this vacation, the way that they wanted to. And that we would compromise and be okay in doing it a little bit more of their way. But I think the major part about all this is now we get to share these amazing things together and make amazing memories. And I think the thing that keeps going through my head is that none of us, none of us really know how much time we have with our parents. And for a lot of us, it's been a lot shorter than we would like. There's a stat out there that I find terrifying is that for most of us, you're gonna spend 95% of the time that you will with your parents by the time that you turn 18, which means all of that time from 18 until they pass away, you're only spending 5% of that time remaining, and that just wasn't good enough for me. Oh my gosh. That was <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> and our kind of old foggy music, too. Yeah, I knew all the songs. <laughs> oh, what night. Yes, we need to maybe knock on their door. Okay, let's do it. Picked up some fruits. This is an Asian pear, and this is a dragon fruit. I wonder if they just call it pears here. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. Welcome, tree guys. Bye. Thanks. That's it. Okay. What do you got to tell us? So many things to say.